Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Penn. I am an environmental education coordinator with the Fulton County Department of Public Works. And I'm so excited that you could join me today as we learn about the environmental holiday that we celebrate in Georgia, Georgia Arbor Day, which we celebrate a little bit differently than the national holiday. In Georgia, we celebrate Arbor Day on the third Friday of the month in February, which this year will be February 18th. And we celebrate it on that day because in Georgia, since we have a warmer temperature typically throughout the rest of the year, it's better for us to go ahead and plant things like trees and shrubs or any woody plants that have, um, that have more of a woody stem in this time of year so that they have an opportunity to get used to the temperature of the soil and their roots have the ability to go ahead and get established a little bit before the really, really warm temperatures of spring and summer start to show up. So that's important for plants to be able to get established and to get plenty of water and to start getting used to their environment before the really hard time of year for them starts to come out. They have to work a lot harder to retain water. So since we're talking about that today, I wondered if we could look at some different ways that we think about trees. So let's talk about what you think of whenever you think of a tree. So when I think of a tree, sometimes I think of a tree that's standing alone by itself in a big open field, and it's the only place that you can find shade and rest in this big, open, sunny spot. Even though it stands alone, it still provides a lot of benefits. But sometimes whenever I think of trees, I think of the forest where lots of trees exist and they all stand together and their roots connect together and it makes them stronger because they have a friend nearby to hold on to, even if it is underground. Or maybe sometimes I think about the trees that are some of the tallest in the entire world. So these trees are found out in California in the United States, with the giant sequoias or the redwoods. And these trees are so tall that when you stand next to them, it, it feels like you, you can't even see the top of the tree. And sometimes that's true because they're so tall. Um, and the, the tallest tree that we have on record in the Guinness Book, Book of World Records is in California. And these trees are just magnificent. Standing next to them certainly makes you feel like an ant. Trees go through lots of changes throughout the year. Some trees lose their leaves. Some trees keep them throughout the year. So trees that lose their leaves, typically in the spring, what we're going to start to see over the next month or so, some of them will start blooming and you'll see these beautiful flowers on them that will produce seed pods so that they have the opportunity to grow new trees. And then in the summertime, most of our trees are going to just be full of leaves and you'll see them anywhere in the parks or along the river or the stream. And then in the fall, we're pretty accustomed to the big change in colors that starts to happen with all the different leaves. Things like maples and oak trees, their leaves change to these beautiful different colors and they give us this, this big show out in nature for about a month as the trees prepare to shed their leaves as they go into somewhat of a dormant state where they kind of sleep for the winter time. And that's sort of what we're looking at right now. So if you go outside today, you go to a park soon, you're going to see the majority of trees are going to not have any leaves on them. But we can 
look at trees closely still, even without the leaves, and we can look at the bark, and we can see all of the branches and the limbs, and how big the actual tree is, and what supports all of these different leaves throughout the year, whenever it is their growing season. And trees can be beautiful even when they don't have their leaves. Now you will notice that there are some trees in your park or, or in your neighborhood that, that do still have green on them. And those types of trees are called evergreen. That means that they keep leaves on their canopy, on their limbs and their branches all year round. Now they don't keep the same leaves all the time. Sometimes they're needles, sometimes they're leaves. But those leaves do eventually die off and, and fall, but they keep some canopy throughout the year. They always have those leaves, always making that food using photosynthesis to turn the sunlight into energy for the tree to stay alive. So those trees are called evergreen, like I said. The trees that lose their leaves, we call those deciduous. It's kind of a funny word, but what it means is that it's, it sheds its leaves every year and it grows a whole new set, a whole new canopy every single spring. And so within the next month, that's what we are going to start seeing happening around us. Now the reason that this program is called My Friend in the Backyard is because it talks about how trees are our friends because of the many, many things that they provide. They provide shelter for animals. They provide a shade spot for us in the summertime when it's hot and we're looking for a place to play. So you might have a swing in the tree in your backyard or a swing in a nearby tree at a park that you can play on and enjoy the, the cool comfort of the shade in the trees in the summertime. But trees also provide things like fruit that we eat on a regular basis. So think about a fruit that you like to eat. And I bet there's a very good chance that it comes from a tree. Not all fruits, but a lot of them do. Some trees provide fruit in a different form, things like nuts. So acorns is something that we are used to seeing on oak trees. We don't really eat acorns, those are mostly for wildlife, but we do eat things like pecans, or pecans, if you say it that way. We eat things like almonds, those grow on trees. And another favorite that you might be familiar with are things like walnuts. And all of these fruits, even though it's not necessarily a sweet fruit like an apple, or an orange that also grow on trees, it is still considered the fruit of the plant and these things do grow on the trees. Now trees have lots of different parts to them that help them function and, and grow and protect them as they survive out in the wild. So we talked about the roots a little bit already. So the roots are at the bottom of the tree and they grow underground. Most of the time we can't see the roots because they're covered up by the soil and they spread out and they not only soak up water and nutrients from the soil, but they provide the tree with the stability. That it gives it the, the way that it stands up and that it stands tall for so long because sometimes we get really windy days and if the trees don't have a good solid root system, then they could just fall over. And sometimes that happens. It just depends on the tree and, and how healthy it is. So the roots provide a way for water and nutrients to get up into the tree from the soil and it provides that stability. So they're pretty important. The next part of the tree that we see if we're starting from the ground is the trunk and the trunk of the tree is the bulk of where the tissues and things that carry water and carry the nutrients and provide the the strength for the canopy to hold that to support the weight of that that's where all of that is housed and it's covered on the outside by bark well each tree has a different kind of bark they all look a little bit different 
And it's one of the ways that you can actually tell what kind of a tree you have, even if there are no leaves to see. You can sometimes tell what tree is in your backyard just based on the kind of bark that it has, which is pretty cool. Now, the bark is there to protect all of those tissues, all of the parts of the tree that carry water and nutrients up into the leaves. So it's really important that it keeps the bark protected and it doesn't get injured in a way. So if you ever think that pulling a branch off of a tree doesn't necessarily hurt it, then it, it could potentially open up a way for some insects to get in or some sort of fungus or disease that could harm the tree. So we wanna make sure that we don't injure the bark, the outside part of that trunk of a tree because even a little opening can be a problem for them. So then we move up into the tree and we start to see the branches, the crown of the tree starts to form. So we've got branches, sometimes they're, they're limbs, and they are the places where we can see leaves starting to form. And they also provide a really great kind of playground for animals like squirrels and birds that are going to use these trees and call them home. Now you might have even been able to find a tree where the branches started kind of low to the ground and that provided a neat place for you to climb and explore that part of the tree that maybe you don't always get a chance to because some trees canopies start really high off the ground and we can't reach them but it gives you a chance to kind of see what wildlife experiences so there's this protection this habitat provided by the canopy of the tree and it gives birds and squirrels and lots of other critters that like to climb in trees a place to hide and to be safe from predators that might get to them. Now you've got the canopy which is where which is created by the leaves in the tree so without the leaves you can't have a canopy of a tree and the canopy is just a way to say the top rounded or shaped part of the tree where all of the leaves grow on the ends of the branches and the stems there. So the canopy is where you're going to find all of the animals that are surviving and living and um, finding that refuge, finding that protection from predators, but it's formed by these leaves. And leaves, like I said earlier, they do photosynthesis. They make the food for the plants because the trees, if you already know this, they make and provide themselves with their own food. And they don't have to hunt and gather like animals do. They are able to use sunlight, turn it into a form of sugar or nutrient that the tree is then able to use to grow and, and become healthier and, and to survive. It, it really is essential for most plants to have a good amount of sunlight and the leaves being spread out the way that they are in the canopy help it make its own food. We talked a little bit earlier about how trees go through these different changes in the year and in the springtime trees have these flowers that help them produce the seeds or the fruits or the nuts whatever it is that the tree makes that helps them grow new trees and a big important part of that is that whenever those flowers open up the trees rely on pollinators to then come, gather pollen, drink the nectar from the flower, and then hop to another flower to pollinate that one so that a seed would actually be able to grow because a flower by itself cannot make a seed unless pollen from another flower has been transferred to it. And so insects like bees, butterflies, wasps, flies, there are even birds that are pollinators. They pick up this pollen as they visit each individual flower and then they carry it over to another one and they leave some behind because it sticks to their bodies. The bees actually collect it because it's a source of food for them. So they carry it from flower to flower, pollinating these flowers so that fruit and different types of nuts and seeds can actually grow on the tree and then those seeds and nuts and fruits get dropped to the ground and they have the opportunity to grow a new tree. 
Uh, it's part of their life cycle. So if you see flowers on a tree and, and you see a bee or a, a butterfly or something buzzing nearby, just stand back and watch. Don't try to shoo the bug away because it's an important, important part of that tree's life cycle. They are there helping the tree and the tree is providing food for the insects. So it's a great relationship and it's a really fun one to watch. So if you get the opportunity to see it, just stand safely by and just make some observations. Watch how the bees and the butterflies move from flower to flower and, and how quickly they work. They're, they're a pretty fast insect. Okay, so we've learned a lot about trees and, and what they do and how they help us. But now I wanted to make a tree with you guys. You guys will get to be creative with the type of tree that you make. And we're going to use some supplies. So now I want to encourage you to pause the video so that you can gather the supplies that will appear on the screen. And then we'll meet back here and we're going to take some time to make and design our own trees using the template that was provided with the program on the Fulton County Library's website. Welcome back. So we are going to get started with our craft um, and I hope that you were able to pause the video and gather all your supplies that you need to be able to make this wonderful tree with me. So this is the template that we provided on the website. This is a tree trunk that has branches and it has the roots down at the bottom and so this would be a deciduous tree like we learned about earlier because this tree obviously loses its leaves in the fall every year and grows a whole new set in the spring. So to start with we've got all of our supplies but we need to prepare the stamp that we're going to use to make the leaves. So if you've got a paper towel roll, it's a little bit longer. You might have a toilet paper roll though that you saved and, and that just might be a little bit shorter, which is perfectly fine. We can get enough leaf stamps for that as well. But you want to try to have one for each color that you're going to use to paint your tree with. Now the first step in your direction says to, to squish or to flatten your roll. And so that's what I've done already. You can see I folded it in half like this. So whenever you look at it, there's this opening and it looks kind of like, almost like an oval, but it's got these two pointed sides to it. Now what I'm gonna do, but you want to ask for a grown-up's help on this, is to grab a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut all the way down the edge of both sides of this paper towel roll, okay? So I'm going to cut Careful one direction. Holding the scissors carefully and pointed away from me and not near my fingers, right? Make sure that we're being safe. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna cut the other side so that whenever I'm done cutting this part, I'll have two different pieces. So again, hold this carefully so that your fingers are not in the way. Cut all the way down the side. Okay, so now I have my two pieces. Now you're going to put one of those to the side. We really only need one of these pieces. But what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in half again. We're going to take the two cut edges and we're going to match them up together. Okay. And we want to form another kind of oval with the squished ends. So match them up the best you can and fold all the way down. Okay. And 
And now here is what you want to think about. We don't necessarily need this entire length of two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many colors I have that I'm going to use. And so for, for my plate, I have four different colors here that I'm planning to make leaves with. I have a green, a yellow, an orange, and a red. So I only need four of these leaf stamp cutout prints. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut four off of this and then I'm going to tape them together so that they'll keep the shape that I want. Okay, so you only need about this much. So that's one, two, three, and four. Okay? So now I've got this little piece of paper towel roll it kind of looks like the letter V. All right. So what I want to do is I want to match up those two sides that I folded before where it's cut. I'm going to take a little piece of scotch tape and I'm going to tape those together. Okay. Put the tape on there really good. And now you have your leaf stamp. Okay, so you can kind of see how it has the shape of a leaf whenever you look at it a little bit opened. So this is, I'm going to have one stamp per color. If you're interested in mixing the colors, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. You might come up with, be able to mix and, and make a color that you didn't have by using two colors. But I'm going to have one stamp per color so that I can keep my color separate, but sometimes I might have a leaf that's half one color, half the other, because then it looks like that leaf is, is changing its colors. It's changing from that green to another one. Okay, so I'm going to finish making my four little leaf stamps by putting tape on each of them. Okay, so we're ready to start putting leaves onto our tree that we've got. So I've got a plastic tablecloth down to make sure that I don't drip any paint between the plate where my colors are and the tree itself. So taking the first one of my little leaf stamps that I made, I'm going to start with the yellow paint and you don't need a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna touch the stamp so that all of the edges have some paint on it, but there's not just a lot of paint. We're not dripping it. And then I'm going to pick a spot on the tree on one of my branches, and I'm going to press down flat on the surface of the paper with the leaf stamp, wiggle it back and forth a little bit so all the sides are touching, and ta-da! So we've got a little leaf. And there's one little spot over here that it didn't transfer all the way, so I'm going to go back and make that a little bit clearer. So I'm going to make, I'm going to do a couple more of those of the yellow. I'm going to put several. So between each stamp, you probably want to dip it back in the paint so that you make sure you have enough on your stamp to actually make the impression because making one leaf can take enough of the paint off that it may not make a whole leaf the next time you try. Okay, put a couple more on here and then I'm going to switch colors. I think yellow is my favorite fall leaf color of all of them. There are lots of magnificent colors that we get on the trees here in, in Georgia in the fall, but yellow might be one of my favorites. Well, the hickory trees turn yellow with their leaves, and there's another tree called the ginkgo tree. It has probably some of the most brilliant yellow leaves in the fall. Okay, so now I think I want to do some orange going to add orange to this other stamp and 
this one is ready to go. Okay. Let's spread these around. So if you want your fall tree to just all have one fall color, that would be great too. You can certainly do that. This is your tree. You can be creative with it. If you want your tree to have purple leaves, that's perfectly fine as well. And you see how that one kind of filled in. The, the paint sort of made a bubble on my stamp. And so that's neat too. You could take a little paintbrush if you have it and you could fill in the leaves or you could just leave them open like most of mine are. All right, let's do one more down here. Okay, I'll leave that in the orange paint. Let's do some red. And then we'll finish up with some green on the top of some of the leaves so that it looks like this tree has has started changing colors, but it's still got some green leaves. So that just means that there's some more time left in fall for these leaves to really start to change and become beautiful fall tree. These leaves are really filling in. Okay. to my green and so then I just leave the stamps in the colors so if once I'm done putting all the colors on that I want and I decide that I want to go back and add some more of that color I can do that um, let's see And you can really put leaves sort of anywhere on the tree. It doesn't have to be at the end of a branch because leaves grow all along limbs and on different branches that sometimes we can't really see that well. So you can put them anywhere in the crown to decorate the tree. And if you wanted to keep going until you, know, you just had this really full, beautiful crown, that would look really cool. If you had a couple of different shades of a color and paint, that would be neat. Another idea that I had, if you don't have the paper towel roll, but you want to make this craft anyways, is this is a great opportunity for you to do some finger painting. So I'm going to move my, my example of my tree to the side, finished with that one. I'm going to bring another one over. And I'll just show you real quick. I've seen a couple of examples of this before, and I think it's pretty neat. So just dip whichever finger you want to use. If you wanted to do multiple colors, you might want to have one finger per color of paint. And then just pick a spot and start adding your little fingerprints. And this one you could do a couple at a time. It's just a way for you to still do this if all you have is some paint and the template of the tree. And then it will be your special tree because it's your fingerprints that made all of the leaves on the tree. So that's just another cool way to, to decorate it. It might even be a little bit faster. Like I said, I'm going to add in these leaves kind of wherever because trees have leaves all over their branches, not just at the ends of them. There's lots of little stems that branch off and have leaves. So use your imagination here and decorate this tree 
any of the colors you want and however you would like to do this. So one last example, if you don't have the paint and you don't have the paper towel rolls, but you do have some crayons or markers, this would be another great way to decorate your tree. You have your template and we can just practice drawing some leaves. Now the shape that we made earlier is pretty simple, right? It's just two curved lines that meet at each end. So I'm going to use my orange marker and I'm going to draw some leaves on this tree. So I'm just going to start at the edge of the branch and I'm going to draw one curved line and then I'm going to draw another one to match it and meet up with it. Okay? They can be any size that you want. If you want them to be smaller, that's certainly fine and you can do a whole bunch of little bitty leaves or you could do some that are a little bit bigger, you can do a bunch of different sizes. That will be okay too, right? So one line and then draw to meet the other at the end. So make this tree your own. And then it would be really easy if you're working with a marker or a crayon here, you just color them in. And this is a way that you can be really creative. You can make your leaves all sorts of different shapes. So some leaves come, they are heart shaped. And since this is February and we're getting ready to celebrate or they're celebrating Valentine's Day, you can have some heart shaped leaves. You can have just some round leaves. Just draw a circle shape for your leaves instead and that'll make some cool shapes with those too. And then some leaves have wavy edges so you might want to make some leaves like the oak tree has these really cool lobed leaves and they're shaped a little bit differently. So again, use your creativity here. You can use your crayons and your markers to draw any kind of leaf that you like. Thanks again for joining me today for our program on celebrating Georgia Arbor Day, which was on February 18th. And I hope that this will help you to start thinking about places where you might be able to plant a tree or finding a tree that you can help care for even if it's already been planted because they provide so much to us. They really are our friends in the backyard and you can be helpful to protect and to help trees grow wherever they are in their environment so that they can continue to benefit us and wildlife and help protect our water quality here in Fulton County.